it's Bluebird. Ah, whiskey, the water of life. With a price for a single whiskey bottle averaging 377 pounds at auction, being a connoisseur of whiskey often means you have to have very deep pockets. But when so much money is involved in the buying and selling of whiskey, there's bound to be a few fraudsters out there hoping to make a quick buck. So in this video, we're talking about current methods to detect fake and adulterated whiskey. So let's get to it! One current method of detecting a fake bottle is by carefully analyzing the bottle. Experts can compare the paper, ink, glue, cap seal, and bottle cork with an original bottle to determine whether it's genuine. Spelling errors in the label, the wrong kind of paper, or a sloppy glue job are things that experts look for to spot a fake whiskey from a real one. As well, experts may vigorously shake a closed bottle of whiskey to see if it beads. And beading is the formation of bubbles or little circular rings on the surface of the liquid. The longer it takes for the beads to settle down, the higher the alcoholic strength of the whiskey is. So if it doesn't settle down when you expect it to, or it doesn't bead at all, these are all indicators that the whiskey you have isn't genuine or has been watered down. But what happens if the bottle is real, but the liquid inside is fake? If you go onto eBay, you can find people selling empty bottles of rare whiskey such as Macallan. Some of them are priced at a couple hundred pounds. While I'm sure there are people who genuinely like collecting old and empty bottles, we're all allowed our weird indulgences. Fraudsters can buy these vintage bottles, fill them up with some amber-colored liquid, and try to pass them off as the real thing. I mean, if you can buy an empty bottle for 100 pounds, turn around and sell it for 1,500 pounds, well, that's just good business sense. But it's also fraud. In cases where fraudsters use authentic labels and stoppers on the bottle, the only way to authenticate the whiskey is by opening it up and testing a sample. Unfortunately, doing so will almost always decrease the value of the whiskey. One current method of authenticating whiskey is carbon dating. Carbon dating is a technique used to determine the barley growth year, which can be used to accurately date whiskey produced post-1950s. You might be wondering why this technique can only accurately date whiskey that's produced post-1950s. Well, let's backtrack a little bit to what carbon dating actually is. A large amount of cosmic rays enter the Earth's atmosphere every day. These rays can collide with atoms in our atmosphere, and through a series of reactions between atomic particles, a carbon-14 atom is formed. This carbon-14 atom is radioactive and will combine with the oxygen in the air to form carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is taken up by the plants during photosynthesis. Animals eat the plants, we eat the plants and animals, and so our bodies will have a percentage of carbon-14 atoms inside them too. But don't worry too much about being radioactive. Only about one in a trillion carbon atoms are carbon-14. The ratio between normal carbon and carbon-14 in a living thing is pretty much constant at any given time in the world. However, when that living thing dies, it stops taking in carbon. Inside it, the carbon-14 is radioactive, meaning it's unstable and will break down over time. The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years, and the half-life is the time it takes for the radioactivity in an isotope, in this case carbon-14, to fall to 50% of its original value. For example, if someone were to die today, June 1st, 2020, and we measured the amount of carbon-14 in their body on June 1st, 7750, that's 5,730 years from now, we'd find that it's fallen to 50% of the value that it is today. 
Carbon dating has been used to accurately date the age of archaeological artifacts up to 50,000 years old. So why then can we only use it to date whiskey post-1950s? Hmm. Well, that's because nuclear testing began in 1945 in the United States. This nuclear testing had a global effect, meaning that it led to a rise in nuclear radiation levels worldwide. Even in the United Kingdom, this nuclear radiation would enter the soil and be picked up in trace amounts by the growing barley. This barley would be used to produce whiskey, and so the whiskey would also show signs of this increased nuclear radiation. The distinct spike in nuclear radiation levels from 1945 onwards make it easy to match the barley growth year to the date the whiskey was produced. If we really wanted to, we could still use carbon dating to test pre-1950s whiskey, but again, it just wouldn't be as accurate. Older whiskies pre-1950s are exceptionally valued and cannot be accurately dated with the carbon-14 dating technique. So this is where gas chromatography comes in. Gas chromatography is a technique that can be used to highlight fake whiskey by identifying the level and variety of key markers in cask aging. Key markers are minor chemical substances that form in the whiskey as the whiskey reacts with the cast during maturation. For example, the amount of 3-methylbutanol in an authentic sample of whiskey can be measured and compared with other samples to determine if those samples are fake. Gas chromatography will also provide a profile of the amount of each congener, substances responsible for taste and flavor in a whiskey. Every whiskey is slightly different from each other, from where their ingredients are sourced, to the type of stills used for distillation, to the time the spirit will spend maturing inside the cask. These differences mean that each whiskey will possess a unique ratio of these different congeners. Just like all people have a unique fingerprint, all whiskies have a unique congener profile, which can help identify a fake whiskey from a real one. The problem with gas chromatography is that it's time consuming and it has to be done inside a lab. So there's currently a need in the whiskey industry to come up with methods to reduce these testing times and to allow for testing that can be done on the go. We'll talk about what newer methods scientists are currently working on to detect whiskey fraud. But that's for another video. I'd like to thank Sarah Fraser from the Borders Distillery, whose beautiful brain provided the basis of this video. Please support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more distilling and distillery videos. This is Rupert sending good vibes your way. I'll see you next time.